Hello everyone, I welcome you all once again to MSP lecture series on transmetallic chemistry. We have started discussion on classification of ligands by donor atom. So far I have completed discussion on hydrogen, carbon and uh, nitrogen I just began in my previous lecture and I gave little information about uh, the donor properties of nitrogen and how the nitrogen behaves very similar to isocyanides and carbon monoxide so that uh, one can do some reactions. If you know a little bit more about how we can perform on bound nitrogen some reactions that might be helpful in those who are working in the nitrogen reduction and carbon dioxide reduction and other such similar reactions. From that point of view let me continue from where I had stopped. Let us look into the reactivity of coordinated uh, nitrogen ligands or nitrogen donor ligands. So, how this electrophilic attack by H or any other electrophiles results in new products that we can see in a couple of reactions by choosing very specific examples. Let us consider a simple a phosphine and nitrogen complex. So, when we have phosphines and when we try to put dinitrogen we should remember we should go for very strong sigma donor ligands among phosphines if we have alkyl groups they are good sigma donors. From that point of view you can see in most of these reactions we are using alkyl bound phosphines not the aryl and of course here to have some moderate sigma donor ability one can also replace one of the alkyl groups with aryl groups such as phenyl. So, when this compound is treated with Hx So, in this reaction one of the N2 is liberated whereas the other N2 is reduced to form this kind of product. Diphos is a bidentate ligand. I shall show you the structure. Okay. Diphos is nothing but This is our 1, 2 bis diphenyl phosphine or benzene. The mechanism of N2 reduction in biological system is not really clear. However, the reactivity of coordinated N2 is well studied. The reaction involve usually hydrozido, imido, and nitride species. Uh, the possible reactions one can anticipate are electrophilic, nucleophilic, or coupling reactions. So now let us look into the electrophilic attack by H or other electrophiles. The same reaction I am considering again.
the addition of Rx here can leads to Cx bond cleavage and radical reaction. Now let us look into uh, nucleophilic reaction, what would happen if a nucleophile attacks the nitrogen center. A manganese complex is chosen for this purpose having cyclopentadienyl ligand and 2 carbon monoxide. When this is treated with methyl lithium initially it forms an intermediate of this type of course here counter cation is lithium on further treatment with me3o bf4 a good methylating agent And when we treat this with a typical alkyl magnesium such as uh, diethyl magnesium, it gives an interesting magnesium complex uh, having 2 cobalt moieties. So, this ethyl group it abstract hydrogen from cobalt hydrogen bond to give C to H6. And of course, here we have this reaction is carried out in THF. So, this is another reaction that depicts the nucleophilic uh, reaction of coordinated nitrogen. So, with this let us move on to consider another interesting ligand called nitrosyl ligand. Nitric oxide we call it as uh, nitrosyl okay, NO is a bioregulatory agent produced endogenously. Disturbances in the production and regulation of NO are known to cause central nervous system disorder and asthma besides many other diseases. Iron nitrosyl complexes help to balance the beneficial effects of NO against its potentially fatal effects. Of course, one should remember the fact that NO is also a very toxic gas. Now let us look into the MO diagram of NO before we proceed for preparatory methods and reactivity and other things. You can see here the MO diagram and of course if you count valence electrons in case of NO, 6 electrons are coming from oxygen and 5 electrons are coming from nitrogen. So that means we have totally. Uh, 11 electrons. So, uh, 2 s electrons can be left for all practical purpose because they are not adding anything to NO bond. So, now you consider 3 electrons and of course here 2 electrons are there they form anti-bonding and bonding. The what is interesting is about 2 p electrons here and 2 p electrons here and if you see here we have 4 electrons and here uh, 3 electrons. If you start filling in this fashion, we will be left 1 electron in antibonding orbital that leads to the bond order of 2.5. So, that is the reason why NO has a tendency to lose one of the electrons readily is 
to have bond order 3. So, the moment you remove this electron to generate nitrosyl cation, we have the bond order 3 and that is stabilized. So, because of this reason uh, NO acts as a nitrosyl cation. So, let us look into the binding properties and of course, nitrogen has a lone pair here and that lone pair can be readily donated to the metal to form a sigma bond and this is sigma donation. Okay. And then in the linear fashion when it binds the angle should be around 180 or it will be close to 180 and when it binds in bent fashion what happens? It can have an MNO angle of about 120 degree here. And then because of the presence of pi star orbital you can anticipate back donation with NO as well very similar to carbon monoxide and this is how one can show the interaction of filled metal orbital with pi star of nitrosyl ligand. This is back bonding that means this is also a sigma donor as well as a pi acceptor. And the relative strength also I already showed you couple of times earlier in a table you can refer to it if you want once again. So, this one again I am bringing to show what would happen when a metal binds. So, that means this MO diagram depicts the interaction of NO with metal. So, now you can say the focus should be only on these electrons that can go as you know, sigma to the metal. So, you can see here these two electrons are donated to appropriate metal orbital. So, either dx square minus y square or dz square to establish a sigma bond and then metal has electrons in dxy, dxz or dyz. So, those things what happens they can be shared with pi star of this one. So, pi star and metal d orbital having pi symmetry would overlap again to generate pi bonding and pi anti bonding orbital. So, in which these electrons are placed. So, this represents back donation from metal to NO and this represent NO to metal sigma bonding. Okay. This is a typical MO diagram for a metal nitrosyl complex. Now, let us look into the properties of linearly coordinated NO and of course, one can also see the similarities between the way I have written the movement of electrons from oxygen to metal through nitrogen here and this can be very similarly compared to what would happen with carbon monoxide uh, with minimum back donation and maximum back donation with of course having sigma bond intact. In the same way one can also write you can see here when there is minimum just sigma donation this would happen when slightly back donation is there this bond is weakened this bond is strengthened. So, this the three extremes one can think of in case of NO ligand as well. So, when it is detached uh, it leaves as a nitrosyl cation. So, leaving a negative charge on the metal. So, in that context NO plus is a 2 electron donor. If you just count the electrons we have 10 electrons in NO plus and similarly in case of carbon monoxide also 4 plus 6 10 electrons are there in the valence shell. So, it is obvious that both are isoelectronic, but NO plus needs to coordinate to a metal having one electron more. So, that means in order to generate nitrosyl cation it has to bind to a metal and it has to give that electron then only it becomes NO plus and then that would be isoelectronic with carbon monoxide. So, that means 2 NO groups are equivalent to 3 CO groups. And let us look into the synthetic methods that are available for making NO complexes in the laboratory. Simplest method is uh, treating directly NO gas. For example, let us consider CO to CO8 and treat this one with 2 equivalents of NO. So, it is very interesting to analyze this one 
with the structure of this one half a molecule of this one you know why COCO4 cobalt tetracarbonyl exists as a dimer because it is a 17 electron species in order to satisfy 18 electron rule what happens it, it will establish a COCO bond and hence becomes attains 18 electron as a result it stabilizes as a dimeric species whereas in this case when you replace one of the carbon monoxide with NO now NO is a 3 electron donor when it is linear. So, now it is 3 electron if it is giving cobalt has 9 plus 3 so plus 6 so 18 electrons are there. So, that is the reason this can be stabilized simply as a monomeric species you should know the difference why it is stabilized as monomeric species whereas COCO4 is not means that is a 17 electron species and this is an 18 electron species. Let us uh, look into another reaction where we are using a reagent of different type to generate metal to nitrosyl bond. Let us consider FeCO5 and treat this one with uh, PPN. I am not sure whether you are familiar with this cation it is a very bulky cation usually used to stabilize anions. I shall write the structure of that one later after completing this equation. So, you take this one and treat this with uh, NO2 uh, salt in isotronitrile. It is a counter cation and what we get is FeCO3 NO minus plus CO2 plus CO. So, now let us look let us count the electrons here. So, if, if we take uh, Fe there is 8 plus 6 plus 3 so one negative charge is there. So, you will understand why negative charge is there on this one because in order to satisfy yeah, because we have taken out 2 carbon monoxide uh, and 4 electrons have been taken out and in its place we have only 1 NO there is a 3 electron donor. So, with this charge it becomes 18 electron species. So, everything one should uh, you know explain very satisfactory provided we understand this method of electron counting. Now, we must have realized how important it is to know how to do electron counting. And PPN what is PPN? PPN is nothing but this bulky cation and the NO2 here is neutral. So, this is called PPN. Let us look into a couple of more methods of preparation of nitrosyl compounds. Let us consider now very different one. Uh, so far we discussed it with uh, two metal uh, complex in zero valent state. Now let us go to another metal in high valent state osmium tetroxide. In osmium tetroxide osmium is in plus 8 state. So, when this is treated with NH2OH HCl in presence of NCS isocyanide ligand thio isocyanide ligand one can make So, this is another way of making nitrosyls with metal in high valent state. Okay. Uh, let me write one more another interesting reaction here. Let us consider rhodium chlorocarbonyl bistriphenyl phosphine complex. When this is treated with NOBF4. So, now let us look let us count electrons here. So, this one let us go with the neutral method. So, this is now cationic. So, this in plus 3 state if you go with this one 9 plus 1 plus 2 plus I will leave it here 
and plus 4. So, now we see 16 plus now this is 3 and now the charge is now positive. So, we have a negative. So, since positive charge is there you subtract 1. So, it goes. So, it is 18 electron species. So, you can always verify this way to know what kind of uh, donor NO nitrosyl group is. Since I told you nitrosyl is both it forms bent 1 electron donor and also when it is linear 3 electron donor. So, this helps in understanding this one. I think uh, these 4 methods are sufficient and if you are interested in looking into more methods always you can go to right kind of textbooks. Now, let us look into the reactions of coordinated NO. So, due to the difference in the electronic structure of linear and bent coordination modes I already mentioned reactivity of coordinated NO can be very different. So, linear MNO groups can be readily attacked by nucleophiles whereas, in bent structure lone pair on nitrogen are susceptible for electrophilic attack, but there can be some exceptions and reactions of linear MNOs that is linear metal nitrosyl bonds with nucleophiles such as OH minus, OR minus, SR minus or NH2R usually occur at the nitrogen atom. You should remember when reaction happens with linear MNO with uh, nucleophiles the reaction usually occurs at N atom and also can occur at oxygen as well. So, well known example is a nitroprosite with hydroxide ion to give a nitro complex. Well known example is of nitroprosite with hydroxide ion to give a nitro complex. I think uh, let me continue showing some of these reactions in my next lecture.